What's up guys, in this video we're making buttons for our Tycoon series right here. In order to make buttons for our Tycoon series, all we need to go ahead and do is insert a part. It can either be a square, a cylinder, whatever part you want your button to be, you can go ahead and make it just like that. Otherwise, if you'd also like to use a mesh part, you can go ahead and do that as well. But as for me, I'm going to simply be using a part. In most Tycoons, you'll see a circular shape for the button here. So I'm going to click on this drop down menu right here underneath the part button and insert a cylinder. Now we have this cylinder, we can rotate it a few times by pressing Ctrl and 4 to use the rotate tool, and then we can just rotate this up and over a little bit, and then we can go ahead and press Ctrl and 3 to use the scale tool just like this, and then you can make this however big you want to. Now once again, keep in mind you don't want to make this too big, as this is just supposed to be a tiny little button for our tycoon here, but yeah, this is basically our button already. If you'd like to make your tycoon button a certain color, you can feel free to do that now. Otherwise, if you'd like to wait until the end where we actually change the color through a script, then you can wait until then for that. Anyways, I'm going to keep mine as gray for now, and then we can press Ctrl and G on this part, or you can right click and press group as a model. So now we have our model right here, I'm going to rename this to button, just like that. And inside of here, our part right here is also going to be named to button. And I guess we shouldn't name the model button, but something like dropper button, something like that. We're going to be changing all the button names anyways. So now inside of our dropper button model, we need to insert a few values. The first value is going to be a string value. So if we click on the plus icon to the right of our dropper button right here and search for a string value, you can see that will pop up right there and it will be added right into our button as soon as we click it. Now the name of this value that we want to add is going to be object. And then we also want to click on the plus icon to the right of the dropper button one more time and insert a int value. So now I have an int value right here inside of our dropper button. We want to rename this one to price, just like that. Since it's the first button, we want to make sure that the value is just set to zero. That way the player can afford it right off the bat. The next thing that you're probably going to want to do is insert a billboard GUI right into our button here. So if we click on the plus icon to the right of our button and search for a billboard GUI, that will get added to this. And now a few things that we want to do inside of the properties in here is that we want to change the max distance down from infinite to something like 40 or 50, whatever you like the best. That'll basically get rid of this from showing up as soon as the player crosses a certain point or gets however far away from the button right here. We also want to make sure reset on spawn is turned off and here's where we get to change the size. I'm going to do something like 5 comma 0 comma 5 comma 0 just to make it really big and that'll be pretty perfect. Next we can insert a frame into our billboard GUI here and I'm going to make sure that the size is something like 1 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 just like that so it'll take up about roughly half of the billboard GUI. Next, if you change the background transparency of this to 1, otherwise you can keep it as 0 if it is easier for you to see it like that. We can insert a text label into our frame, and here's where I'm going to change the size to about something like 1, 0, 0 0.4, 0. So it'll take up about roughly a little bit less than half of our frame here. So now we can go ahead and make sure that text is scaled. We can change the font of this text. We can do whatever you want to this text and customize it however you like. I'm personally going to remove the background transparency of the frame and the text label here just so we have our nice clean text like that. And I'm going to add in a UI stroke to our text label right here so we get that nice outline around our text. Now there are a few different ways you can customize your button, but I'm just basically going to leave it like this, and the text down here I'm just going to rename to dropper1, and then give it a price, something like a dollar sign, and then zero dollars because it is free. Something just like this, but as I said before, this is completely customizable, so you can customize it to however you want it to. Anyways, closing off the billboard GUI like that, and finally our dropper button even, we can drop this into our Tycoons folder, drop it into our Tycoon model, drop it into our Buttons folder right here, just like that. 
Now, if we open up our dropper button, we want to change the object to the exact name of something that we have inside of main, inside of purchased items. So in this instance, we have the colorizer dropper materializer. So for our dropper button, I want to make sure that the object's value is set to dropper with the capital D and everything spelled exactly as the name is in purchased item. Next, we want to open up our scripts folder right here and open up our core script. Here's where we're going to be scripting all of our buttons right here. So now let's create a few new variables for our tycoon here. The first one is going to be local buttons will be equal to tycoon find first child buttons. That will get our buttons folder. Next, we're gonna get our purchased items folder, which will be equal to tycoon, find first child, purchased items, just like that. And then last but not least, we need to create a brand new empty table for our objects to go inside of. So our local objects will be equal to squiggly brackets like that to create an empty table. So here are the variables we're going to be using for this. Let's go ahead and go below this owner door function and start on our buttons. So the first thing we're going to check is if our buttons folder is here, then we're going to create a for loop through all of our buttons right down here. We're going to say for i comma v in pairs our buttons folder get children do we're going to spawn a function just like this. After we have the spawn function code right inside of here, dropping down a line, we can check if our V, find first child button, then. So basically what we're doing with this for loop here is that we're checking for every single button that we have inside of our buttons folder. That's what the V is. It's basically getting every single child of the buttons folder. And it's gonna do exactly what we tell it to do. So we're basically checking that if that child that's in the buttons folder, in this case, it would be our dropper button, has a thing inside of it called button, which it does because that is our button part, then here's where we're going to do three different things. The first one is we're going to create a new object, and this will be equal to our purchased items, find first child v.object.value. So this is going to go into our purchased items folder, and that's going to find the name of whatever our object value is that we have inside of our button. So in this case, it would be the dropper, so it's going to go into our purchased items folder and find the dropper, if that makes sense. Next, we're going to check if our new object does not equal to nil, then we're going to grab our objects table. We're going to say our new object dot name, and then this will be equal to our new object clone, just like that. Now that we have the new object's name inside of our object's table, we can basically just go ahead and destroy our new object just like that. Now otherwise, basically, if we cannot find the new object that is inside of our purchased items that has to do with our button's object value, we can basically just tell our button to destroy itself because we don't really need it if it doesn't have an object value, if that makes sense. Next up, if we go ahead and go back to our viewport right here. We have our button right here, but let's say we duplicate this by pressing Control and D. And then we moved it over a bit, just like this. And I'm going to rename this one to our colorizer button, just like this. Now inside of our colorizer button, there's a brand new string value that we need to add called dependency. So if we search for a string value and add this to our button right here and name this to dependency, then we can go ahead and start creating our second button here. Now basically what the dependency is going to do is that this button won't show up until we find the dependency's value inside of our purchased items folder. So if we set this dependency over to our dropper, and the object of our button over to the colorizer, then you'll see that this button basically won't appear in our workspace until our dropper is inside of the purchased items, which will happen whenever we buy this button, if that makes sense. And then from then on, it will just be a normal button and will function as usual. So if our V, find first child dependency, then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set our button's transparency all the way up to 1. So we're going to say our v.button.transparency will be equal to 1. And our v.button 
dot can collide will be equal to false, just like this. Now we're basically going to use coroutine to create a new function. So coroutine dot resume, coroutine dot create, and we're going to create a function with this, just like that. Now we can go ahead, drop a new line, and say that if our purchased items wait for child our v dot dependency dot value then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna set our v dot button dot transparency and can collide back to true and to zero so if we just copy these two lines right up here and paste them right back down here we can just change this from a one down to a zero and from this false to a true just like that so now if we go down three ends just like this drop a few new lines, here's where we get to actually create our button function. So if we say v.button.touched, we're going to connect a function to that. And this function is going to take the parameter of hit. The first thing we're going to do is see if it was a player that actually touched this button. So we're going to say local player will be equal to game.players get player from character hit.parent with a capital P just like that. Then we're going to check that if it was our player, we're going to check if that player was the owner of our tycoon now. So if our values.ownerValue.value .value equals equals to player, then we're going to drop a new line. And if our v.button.canCollide equals equals to true, then we're going to check if the player has enough money to actually buy this button. So if our player find first child leader stats dot cash dot value is greater than or equal to our v dot price dot value, then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to grab our objects table. We're going to find our v dot object dot value. We're going to set that parent to our purchased items folder just like that. Although before we do that, we do want to make sure that we actually get rid of the player's money that they spent on the button. So we're going to say player.leaderstats.cash.value minus equals our v.price.value right up here. Next, we can go ahead and basically just destroy our button because we have no more need of it. So yeah, this is our entire button script right here. It covers everything from our .touched function our dependencies, and even our objects that we're taking care of right there. So now we can go ahead and close off our script right here, and it's incredibly important to note that you definitely need to make sure that your buttons are anchored, otherwise they will completely disappear from your game. So make sure that you have those anchored, and let's go ahead and press play. So joining into our game, I realized I forgot one thing, and that was setting our billboard GUI's visibility to false. But we can go ahead and change that a little later. But as you can see that our dropper is gone and our colorizer is gone because those were the two items that we had for our tycoon here inside of our buttons. So I'm going to claim this tycoon and if I go over here and buy this first button you can see my dropper will show up over there and now that I bought this first button the dependency in the other button has triggered which means that this button has now turned visible and if I buy this one as well, the colorizer will spawn in as well. So let's go ahead and press stop, go right back into our main script right here, and just basically where we get our v.button, we also want to say our v.button.billboardgui.enabled equals to false, and then we can go ahead and basically copy this line in all of our other pieces of code. And keep in mind that where we want it to be enabled to true, we need to set that enabled to true, otherwise we want to make that enabled to false. So I believe that's everywhere in our script that has it just like that, so we just want to make sure that that is perfect and that is just fine. Another thing that is pretty cool to add and that is completely optional is a script that will basically change our button's color depending if the player has enough money to buy it or not. Something simple that if they do not have enough money for it, it will basically be red and if they do have enough money for it, that it will turn green. So if we go ahead and click on this dropper button and add in a script into our button right here, there's a few things that we need to do. The first one is that we need to get our owner value. So we're going to say local owner value equals to script.parent, which will get to our button, dot parent, which will get to our button model, dot parent, which will get to our buttons folder, 
dot parent which will get to our tycoon model and then we can do dot values and then dot owner value just like that next we can say owner value dot change we're going to connect a function to that and if our owner value dot value then we're going to grab our player from that owner value so our local player will be equal to our owner value dot value and then we're going to basically do a while loop so I'm going to do while wait 0.1 and we're going to do this. I'm just going to put a 0.1 here to reduce any lag that might happen. And then we're basically going to check if our player find first child leader stats dot cash dot value is greater than or equal to our script dot parent dot parent dot price dot value. Then we're going to say script dot parent dot brick color equals to brick color dot new and then we can do lime green something like that else our script dot parent dot brick color is going to be equal to brick color dot new and really red something just like that so now if we close off this script and our core script we can copy this script that we have inside of our first button and make sure that's pasted into our second button just like that and for the sake of that script working, I'm basically going to go ahead and change the price of our colorizer button to something like 5 cash, just so you guys can see it in action. Now if we click play one more time, you can see the button won't change color until we actually claim the tycoon. But, now that we have enough money for our first dropper, it is now green. However, if I buy this, since we don't have the 5 cash required for our button right here, it will be red. Another thing we do need to keep in mind though is that whenever we duplicate our button, we need to open it up, go into our billboard GUI, our frame, and then our text label and change the text from dropper1 to something like colorizer and then change the cash value just like that so that way the player knows how much the button is actually worth. Now keep in mind next time we will be adding animations for our buttons so that it will be much more satisfying. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.